The Top Knot Creative Show, The Top Knot Creative Show, seeking super smart, super talented superheroes, how to be wow over the world and all around, The Top Knot Creative Show, The Top Knot Creative Show. Hello everyone, this is Shantae Schrader and welcome to the show where we seek out the super smart, super talented, and basically the superheroes who are taking over the world and making it super wow. Today we are talking with Tasha Ray Tantra, who is the owner of Tasha Ray Jewelry. And I'm so excited to have Tasha on the show today. Once you visit her site and see all her jewelry, you're going to be just as excited for what we have discovered here. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Tasha. She started her business in college making jewelry out of washers and nails and whatever else she could get her hand on. Eventually trained with a master goldsmith and back blacksmith to further her skills in design. She's been a one-woman show for the last 10 years, participating in art fairs, galleries, and eventually starting her own online presence. And she's learned a lot in that time. Some things the hard way and some things uh, with the most grateful for friends, family, and community who supported her and her dream. Her true interest is within the narrative of jewelry and she loves to tell a story. And if you visit her website, you'll see uh, under the about section a video all about her and her process and it's just absolutely beautiful. And we couldn't be more excited to have Tasha on the show with us. Tasha, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Well, first, let's go back to when you started jewelry. You were in college, and you were getting a, um, a degree in something that I don't know if we would really put those together as arts <laughs> and <laughs> this other degree. So tell us about that. Yeah, I went to school originally for engineering, and physics was my interest. And throughout all those courses, I really was finding that I was attracted to the more the creative side about it. Mm -hmm. So I eventually changed to art and graphic design, and um, my last semester of college I had to take a three-dimensional class, and I took art metals and fell in love with it. Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately, I was finishing my four-year degree and um, didn't really have the finances to stay around and take more courses. Mm -hmm. So when I finished, I ended up apprenticing with a goldsmith and blacksmith um, at the Howard Academy School of Arts in um, Madison, Wisconsin. And that's where I picked up most of the trade, and then it was kind of self-taught from there. And so you decided that this was something that you wanted to evolve into a career right then and there? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's nothing better than doing what you love. Mm -hmm. And out of all the other, I was waitressing, and I was working at a photography store, and people would come in, and I would just talk to them about the jewelry I was wearing. You know, and I would just want to tell them about, you know, how I made it, and then eventually people were interested in buying it, and um, it was so exciting. You know, it was like the most exciting thing I'd ever experienced, so it was a natural direction to keep following that path. So how long did you um, do an apprenticeship with the, the Master Goldsmith and Blacksmith to when you decided to start your own online company? Well, I was, I was selling um, through the whole time. Like, as soon as I decided I wanted to pursue this career, I just kept selling everything I was making because that's oh. the only way to really get ahead is to just learn what people want and to put it out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I was still doing art fairs and everything, but there was a lot of techniques that I didn't know. Um, so I'd say, like, right after I finished um, my apprenticeship, in Madison, I moved up to Minneapolis and I got my own studio and then it was then it was full time from there on out and that was my hundred percent focus um, and that was about five years ago so it was about five years into me starting the business Love before it. I really got full time going on it Excellent. now you decide to launch your online website and um I mean, once you decided to go full time, maybe give us some of the the ups and downs of that, the the learning curves of just running a business, and then in addition having that creative energy to create jewelry. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it def it it becomes more of it becomes a business. You know, it starts out as a hobby and, and a passion and a love, mm -hmm. but you know, at the end of the day, all all jobs are jobs, and there are aspects that you know a creative minded person is better at. 
than other things. So, like, creating a website was way over my head, and I didn't really have the money to figure it out, so I was calling my cousins <laughs> who had experience and, like, anyone I knew that could help me just put little things together, and um, it's been a really been a process <laughs> but I know a lot more about it now than I did five years ago and um so you know that that's been huge because online is is half the game you know people see your stuff in the store they want to go home and google it and if they can't find you in a couple of minutes then they just assume you know that you don't have that presence mm -hmm. so it's got to be there and it's got to be fast um so you know those have been like the biggest challenges for me because the rest of it is just you know, to just keep making whatever I'm envisioning. You know, putting it out there, telling my story is natural. Mm -hmm. You know, getting the, the basics behind it is um, is definitely the, the business, the job, um, and the learning curve. So. <laughs> now, um, let's go back to the jewelry. You have some um, collections, uh, one being the Gunslinger, um, Tell us kind of how these, these, how they're inspired and then how they evolve. Well, the Gunslinger in particular, I, I was, um, had the opportunity to be in a gallery show that was all based on found objects. You know, it was painters, um, a bunch of different mediums. And when I first started my business in Wisconsin, you know, I've, I've always been a collector. So I was wandering through the woods on a hike one day, and I just saw something shiny. And so I picked it up, and they were bullet casings. And I don't know much about guns, and I've not ever hunted or anything, but I just found them to be gorgeous, so I kept them. So when the opportunity for this show came up, I thought, well, it would be a really cool thing to make, you know, jewelry out of. So I cut the backs off and set stones in them. It's really evolve them so you don't really know what they are at first, but yet it's something that's very um, Americana, iconic, you know, for people that they do recognize. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the fun in that project. And then what it turned into is people contacting me about stories of loved ones um, who had maybe passed away in the military. And during the military funerals, they do the gun salutes. And everyone saves these casings because they have so much meaning to them, but no one knows what to do with them. Mm -hmm. So it really evolved into an opportunity for me to help families tell the, their story. You know, I could make necklaces for everyone in the family, and then every time they're wearing that necklace, when someone comments on it, it's a avenue for them to share a story of, of their family member, and of their heroism, and, and their sacrifice. And that's that's amazing. That's my that's probably my favorite part about my job. Wow! So you had no idea when you f you picked that up on your walk that that would actually be, I mean, this this story for a lot of people. Right. Wow, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Yeah, it it has justified my my collecting habit because <laughs> <laughs> now I can keep things for years, <laughs> knowing that someday it'll all make sense and I'll know what I need to use it for. <laughs> So. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let's let's talk about um, maybe another collection. I know you do everything from necklaces to earrings, bracelets, um, rings, um, and you also do custom pieces. Is that true? I yeah, I do a lot of custom work. Um, I do do a lot of um, kind of untraditional wedding bands. Um, I'm trained through my blacksmithing um, training. I'm trained in doing Damascus steel, which is the steel that they use for samurai swords in Japan. Okay. And um, so I've done a lot of wedding bands out of that because you can cut matching patterns for the woman and the man. So when you butt them up next to each other, um, they match up. So, you know, it's a lot of custom pieces. Like I do a lot of custom bridesmaid pieces. Like if someone has costume jewelry from their grandmother and they want it made into something for their bridesmaids, um, all that kind of stuff, but it does it does revolve around usually a beginning point, a be beginning narrative mm -hmm. of whatever story the person wants to tell. Love it. Now, how do you find? Um, I mean, you this is a creative um, genre, so how do you keep those creative aspects just flowing for you? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I think a lot of it comes naturally, but for me, I love I love sharing stuff and I love being social about it. But the time that I really come up with the best ideas is just me by myself. You know, just taking the time to separate myself from the rest of the world and to really just think and be inspired by what's around me. Um, if you allow that time to happen, you know, it's amazing. It doesn't happen right away, but one idea spawns into another idea, you know, and three days later you have what you were looking for. Um, but it's it's definitely, you have to take the time to do it because there's a million other things. You know, you could be working on your website or you could be marketing, um, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a good product, none of it matters. <laughs> I love that. I was actually just going to ask, like, okay, well, that goes into time management. One, being patient with yourself to mm-hmm. allow for that process, <laughs> but um, you also have to consider time management because you do have a website that needs to be updated. You do have to market yourself. as a how do, Maybe give our listeners some tips that you've learned along the way as far as managing it all, but definitely saving the bulk of your time for creative because, again, like you said, you have to have an amazing product still. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I try, you know, it's it's a, it's a always a struggle, but what I really try and do is schedule my day, and I know when I'm more productive cre- creatively. You know, in the mornings I get up and I try and do all my emails and any, you know, online stuff, phone calls, you know, just get all that stuff out of the way. Mm-hmm. And then I do, it's like kind of like a little kid, like I give myself rewards. <laughs> You know, because there's, like, projects that I don't necessarily want to work on. And it's like, well, when I finish this project, then I'm going to go do this. Or I'm going to listen to, like, my favorite CD or something silly like that. But, you know, you got to have those little moments to get you through the hump. And then once it's all over, then there's nothing weighing on you. You know, then that's when you can really just be open and, and creative and not worry about what you should be doing. Because hopefully all that stuff is... It's already finished. Exactly, exactly. So that's how it works for me. But, I, you know, every, everybody's different. You know, some people are more productive right away in the morning and spend their evenings catching up. And But it is very important to manage time. Plan, plan your day out, map it out, maybe create some patterns of activities so that they become more habit. Yes. In place. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, um, now, if someone were looking to um you know they're shopping your site they're looking at jewelry they're wanting something custom made what should they think of when uh, they think of someone like you who they want to work with i mean what are some of the 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 bullet points that or the check marks that they should look at um well you know i think there's there's a lot to be said in this new you know shop local whether it's me or anyone else um, it's very important for me that all of my pieces and parts are made um, in the United States. You know, there's lots of manufacturers here that really can't compete with manufacturers in Asia because of the cost, you know, and they're going to take small companies like myself to give them the opportunity to get back on the map, and that's the same opportunity I need for my customers to get me on the map. So, I mean, I think... The benefits of that is, you know, say you have, you know, you buy a ring and you have it for a year and it gets scratched or, heaven forbid, a stone falls out. Like, I'm right here and I'm always going to guarantee my work. You know, you're not going to, you can call me, you can talk to me about it. You know, we can come up with a plan. Um, You're not going to have to call a corporation and file something and then wait and then have them tell you, oh, it's past 15 days, there's nothing we can do about it. So, you know, you're you're buying a part of me and you're buying a part of every um, supplier that I work with. And, you know, I always feel like you, it's the American dream. You know, you have to support those people who are taking that chance because it's such a sacrifice for everybody and it's such an opportunity at the same time. Love it. Now, if someone were looking to get into business for themselves... Um, how would you mentor them? Um, I would say, you know, the the number one thing I would tell them is just keep going for it. 
You know, I have been denied to more art fairs than I've gotten into. <laughs> I recently was denied to an art fair the same day I found out I was going to be featured in GQ magazine. Oh. You know, and it was a small town art fair, you know, and that's just, that's the nature of the game. You have to keep going for it. If it's something that you believe in, just keep going, and it's going to take sacrifice. You know, like it might be you can't go out this weekend because you have to finish a project, you know, to show someone on Monday. Um, so sacrifice and tons of hard work. But if you love it and you believe in it, it doesn't always feel like hard work. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't always feel like sacrifice. So, you know, to just kind of hone in on on how it makes you feel and, like, what you envision for your success and just stick to it, you know, and don't let anything get in your way. I'm also hearing the part where make sure it's something you do love because when it does get hard, you can always go back to that part that I still love this, so it makes it worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. With my dream, like, I make everything by hand, and at this point um, in my career, I'm really happy doing that. But that doesn't mean that down the road... I won't find more joy in just the designing avenue, and I could hire someone else to help me, you know, with the the physical creation of the pieces. You know, you just never know. It's um, it's part of the journey, and always keep an open mind, and always listen to your heart for what you get the most satisfaction out of. Love it. That was going to be my next question is, I mean, if, if there is a five-year plan or vision, what is that for you for Tasha Ray Jewelry? Um, I would, you know, I would love to eventually have a storefront someday where I can not only show my own jewelry, but I've had the opportunity to become friends with and be exposed to what I think is some of the the best jewelers in the industry, like across the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, I would would love to open a a front where I can work and can be my studio, um, but also show off all of these other creative minds as well. So, you know, it's just choosing the location in the right moment. And um, hopefully I can make that happen. Wonderful. And if if our listeners, um, which I highly recommend that you visit her website, um, TashaRay.com, and just look at everything. It's so beautiful. If they want to, you know, learn more about you, learn more about... Uh, jewelry shop the the merchandise what is the best way to do that um well you can always send me an email to um respond with any questions so my yeah my website is tasharay.com which is t-a-s-h-a-r-a-e.com um i do write a blog um i don't get on there as often as i would like but I, i do like to show people you know other work that i'm inspired by as well from other jewelers and you know I I write about my experiences and the places I've had good experience with and good community and sometimes places that I would say you know don't try this avenue (laughs) Um, (laughs) because you know I wish someone had told me so I'm I'm always happy to offer any advice along the way Wonderful. And we will have all the, uh, the URL, email, all of those on our website and links so for our listeners. But I do encourage you to go to TashaRay.com. It's a beautiful site. Um, the Gunslinger collection is featured. It's one of the first things you'll see, and you'll love it. You'll just fall in love with it. Um, as well as under the About section, you'll fall in love with Tasha because... I certainly did, and I will be cyber-stalking you for a while here. <laughs> uh, but thank, thank you. you so much for being on the show. I learned uh, so much and about your journey, but also some really excellent tips for starting your dream, you know, just kind of getting yourself out there and doing what you love. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate talking to you. Wonderful. To our audience, thank you for listening. Now get out there, build something beautiful. Until next time, take care.